I think if you've been bitten uh, by a deer tick, you should run screaming from the woods and, and go straight to a doctor. In the 1950s and 60s, people began moving out of the cities into modest suburban dwellings. By the 1990s, trends in housing and increased affluence favored larger homes bordered by forest. As human migration expands and encroaches into the animal's domain, the risks for disease from these animals increases. Deer ticks thrive in suburban and even semi-urban areas and can be found throughout the eastern U.S. and parts of the upper Midwest. Deer are truly the Trojan horses of the New England landscape. Out in Rhode Island, northern Rhode Island, I have seen deer in, in my yard. Yes, I have. And actually, they've been pretty close to the house. Seeing deer is a very good um, indicator that you may be at risk in your own backyard environment. The deer are important for these ticks as reproductive hosts. People think Lyme disease comes from the deer. What comes from the deer are deer ticks. The adult stage tick prefers a large animal. The largest common animal that they're likely to find are white-tailed deer. The deer sweep through the environment and can pick up hundreds and hundreds of these ticks, which then take their blood meal and detach from them wherever the deer happened to be at the time. And then they form eggs and start the whole life cycle of the tick over again. After ticks hatch from eggs, they transform from a larval stage to a nymphal stage. Larvae and nymphs prefer to feed on small rodents. Mice are really important animals in the life cycle of these deer tick transmitted infections. They serve as the reservoir and when ticks take their blood meal from them, they become infected. Most people would be surprised just how many mice they, they have in their own backyard. If you live near woods, um, there are plenty of mice. You just don't see them because they're active at night. People are more likely to see chipmunks um, that are active during the daytime, but there are always more white-footed mice in someone's yard than, than chipmunks. People are at greatest risk for Lyme disease in the summer because that's the time of year when the middle or nymphal stage ticks are active. Um, these tiny poppy seed sized ticks are just hard to see. They crawl up from the ground, up people's legs and arms, underneath their clothes. People don't feel them and they're just hard to see. In the fall, adult deer ticks mate. They stay on the host animal for about seven days. When the deer ticks are full of blood, the females detach wherever the deer may be, and they overwinter in the leaves. Each female lays up to 1,500 eggs in the leaves. The adult stage deer ticks become active in the fall, usually starting to blood feed in October. And that's what surprises people because so often they think, oh, other bugs like mosquitoes are killed by the first frost, but not these bugs. These bugs are different. My dog, in the winter, I walk him in the woods. In the summer, I don't because the deer ticks or the ticks are too bad. But I would walk him every day in the winter. And even when it was cold, I would still get ticks on him as long as it was above freezing. You know, everybody thinks you're only going to get ticks in the summer. It's not true. You will find them in the winter and all it takes is that one day. It's not something that you can control through diet and exercise. It's not something you have any control over. It's something that has control over you. Dr. Mather and his team's mission, to develop new vaccines, improve treatment and diagnosis, and to prevent tick-borne illness.
blood-sucking arthropods just seemed very interesting because if they don't suck blood, they don't survive. And by sucking blood, they become infected with disease-causing pathogens and they um, transmit disease-causing pathogens. White-footed mice and chipmunks carry these diseases and infect the ticks. Deer ticks transmit more than just the Lyme disease agent. They also transmit the agents that cause babesiosis and anaplasmosis. And these are all serious human infections. A very unlucky person can contract Lyme disease, babesiosis, and anaplasmosis. Three infections from a single tick bite. Deer ticks thrive in high humidity, in shady areas with leaves on the ground, along the edges of the forest or in the forest. We got one. Oh, oh, is that one? These are the tiny ones. These are the ones that really give you the disease. I think it is. <laughs> you think it's a boy? You might have killed him. But forests and humidity are not the only factors that help ticks to thrive. There are over 150,000 miles of stone walls in New England. And stone walls harbor hundreds of white-footed mice. Stone walls are a really common feature of the New England landscape. Many of them were built hundreds of years ago when the first settlers cleared the land and cut down all of the trees. And all that we had in the landscape were these stone walls. After the turn of the last century, the trees started to grow back, in some cases growing back around these stone walls, making great habitat for mice. These stone walls are like little rodent condominiums where mice and other animals are in very high concentrations, and these are the animals that carry ticks and infect ticks. So you might want to just look at your stone walls a little bit differently in the future. From the air, it's almost easier to see why Lyme disease has emerged the way it has as such an important infection in humans. These second growth forests were home to the wildlife that served as hosts and reservoirs for the ticks and the diseases. And now, neighborhood after neighborhood has been cut right into these second growth forests. And so now humans inhabit these areas as well, along with the ticks and the other animals.